Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of my Transfer Roundup series. Apologies for no videos over the last two days. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll know why. I lost my granddad, which is, uh, yeah, real sad. I, I really appreciate all the kind messages. Tough times. 2020 has been an awful year, but uh, the grind continues. We're back with another edition of transfers that have been completed and also some big rumours and I've just realised you can see a dog in the background there can't you the little bit of white fluff down there anyway let's kick off the episode with a confirmed deal we have let me just find it again there it is Kevin Volland has moved from Bayer Leverkusen to Monaco for around 14 million pounds I believe this is because Bayer Leverkusen are bringing in Patrick Schick I think I've said his name right probably not so they're doing a real swap there, investing the money they're going to make from the Havertz deal, which I'm sure will be announced soon. Havertz going to Chelsea. But uh, Volland, great striker. He may not score 30 goals a season, but he's a, he's a really great, great attacking player. He can play on the wings uh, and, and does a really good job up top as well. So Monaco, I think they've done a really good job in recruiting Volland. And just for £14 million... That is an absolute steal. We have another German player moving from the Bundesliga, this time over to Netherlands, the Eredivisie. We have Philipp Max, the left-back from Augsburg. He has joined PSV or PSV, however you want to say the name. A left-back which I think, if I remember correctly, in at least FIFA 20, he's got one of the highest crossing stats for a left-back in the game. Um doesn't always translate into a realistic stat in real life. But uh, I would guess that Philip Max is pretty good at crossing in real life. And I remember he was linked with Chelsea not too long ago, was he not? And I believe Liverpool were interested a few years ago, back when they were looking at Hector, the other German left back. So I don't know too much about him, but Augsburg have sold him for just 7.2 million to PSV. It's a, it's a good signing for them. Barcelona have sold... Ivan Rakitic for £1.3 million. He's gone back to his original hometown, his original home club, Sevilla. £1.3 million for Rakitic. Absolute bargain. I heard that Sevilla were trying to get him for free, but Barcelona wanted something. Of course, they're going through a really difficult phase right now. We're still waiting for updates on Messi. It seems more and more likely that he's going to end up at Man City, but uh, we're going to leave that for another episode in the future. But for now, Ivan Rakitic has left. They seem to be selling players left, right and centre. There's going to be a massive rebuild there. Rakitic, superb player, absolutely brilliant, but 32 now. He's, he's past it. I think we can all see that he's definitely not at the level he used to be. But going back to Sevilla, that is a fantastic deal for him and for Sevilla themselves. A real proven, experienced midfielder. Now, this one's a strange one. We've got Aaron Moy of Brighton going to the Super League. For 4.05 million, he has joined... I don't want to get the name wrong. Let me just open it, just in case. We've got Shanghai SIPG. I don't know what the SIPG stands for. I thought it was going to tell me. 4.05 million. It's a little bit of a weird one, this. I, th I think Aaron Moy is a fantastic midfielder and certainly was a starter for Brighton, right? So please, Brighton fans, let me know why this has happened. It doesn't make sense to me, but clearly he's been offered... A lucrative contract to go over to Shanghai, but um, a real shame. I, I don't like seeing players leave the uh, the top European leagues to go in and get more money. I, I understand it. You know, he's, he's probably got a family and he wants to secure the future for them. But still, he's playing in the Premier League. Brighton, I think, are going to be ones to watch this uh, this season. They've got some brilliant players. Ben White is staying. He signed a contract extension. So it wouldn't surprise me if Brighton are really fighting for a top 10 finish next season. And he's just, he's gone. It's a little bit of a weird one, isn't it? This name might ring a bell. It might not. Um, he seems to be a bit more popular within the FIFA community because he's, uh, he's, a, he's a player that's got quite a decent potential and he's kind of cheap in the game. So that's why I'm bringing this one up as a career mode based channel. We have Christian Kwame. I don't know if I'm saying his name correctly. It's a little bit of a tricky one that, but the striker from Genoa, uh, he's been linked with a few moves over the last kind of 18 months to some of the big European sides. He's a young, I think he's Ivorian, isn't he? I think he's from the Ivory Coast. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I'm pretty sure he is. He has moved to Fiorentina for 9.9 .9 million. Less than £10 million for Kwame. So 
Uh, maybe he's been overhyped a little bit outside of real football. Um, seemingly, though, not getting a bigger move. It's it's a strange one. I believe Juventus were interested, weren't they, at some point? But uh, he's moved, and uh, that's a, a done deal. Okay, so this guy will definitely ring a bell. Who remembers Rodriguez? He's moved to Torino for £2.7 million. I mean, where are these prices coming from? He's got to be worth more than £2.7 million. He is an incredible left back. Maybe he's he's gone massively downhill. Uh, his market value here is listed at £3.15 million. That's crazy. At one point, he was worth £25.2 million back in 2016. But um, yeah, it's, it's a real interesting one. Was he on loan last season? I think he might have been at PSV. Is that what I'm reading here? I had no idea, but he's gone to Torino. Um, what a fall from grace. Not that Torino's a bad club, but going from AC Milan, like, you know, they're doing a great job right now. But uh, it's another another transfer that doesn't really make sense to me. Let's go ahead and move on to rumours now. Let's do some quickfire rumours because there is a lot going on right now. We've got Thiago potentially almost being a Liverpool player, but uh, other clubs have shown massive interest in the last... 24 hours, 48 hours, including Manchester United, who, of course, are close to signing Van der Beek as well. That's an interesting one. I think he'll go to Liverpool. And in the other direction, I would expect Genie to become a Barcelona player. That's Genie Wijnaldum, of course. Great player. Superb. I'm so surprised that Liverpool are, are, are breaking up that midfield that's been so successful. But it seems like he wants to go and play for Koeman at Barcelona. We've got Matty Cash, the uh, the right back slash right winger, I think he often plays. Uh, Nottingham Forest player linked with a move to Aston Villa, so he could be joining the Premier League. We've got Timothy Castagne, Castagne the Atlanta Belgian wing back. He is potentially joining Leicester and would, I guess, replace um, Chilwell, who of course has gone to Chelsea. So that deal looks like it could be done. It's listed here at 95% probability. So it looks like that one's going to happen. We've got Ryan Fraser, free agent, of course, left Bournemouth. Didn't even try and finish his career at Bournemouth. He didn't even want to play um, with the extended season. I guess he just didn't want to get an injury or something like that. But still, come on, man. Bournemouth made you. Apparently very close to joining Newcastle or Crystal Palace. Newcastle are the favourites right now. That would, of course, be a free signing. So, incredible deal. I know Ryan Fraser has quality. Um, the fact, though, that he was holding out probably for a top six club hasn't worked out, has it? Uh, we've got Emmy Martinez, Arsenal goalkeeper that has been thrusted into the limelight since uh, Leno picked up his injury. Apparently, Emery really wants him at Villarreal. It could happen, according to reports. I really hope not. I don't want to sell him. My gut instinct is that if Martinez isn't told that he will be the starting goalkeeper this season, he will leave. I have a feeling that, I think he said it multiple times anyway, that he has to play now. He has to play first team football. So, worrying signs. It could be that we, uh, we lose Martinez. But I do believe we are looking at, if this does happen, a replacement. The goalkeeper, is it Reyna? Reyno? Ray, I, I can't remember his name. It's not listed here. I'm just off the top of my head. Um, the Brentford goalkeeper could be on his way if Martinez leaves. Also, links with Bellerin right now. PSG apparently have offered £25 million to sign Bellerin from Arsenal. Again, these reports scare me, although... Arsenal fans have been through a lot of sales in the past, and I can think of many, many, many other sales that would upset me more than this one. Bellerin is a good player. At best, he is a starting right back for us, granted. But I think, to be fair, if we were to lose him and it meant we could invest in other areas of the squad, it might not be the worst decision. The guy is 25 now, isn't he? Something like that. So... 30 million maybe if we could get that. That'd be probably quite good. And then maybe Ainsley Maitland-Niles can make that position his own. He seems to be staying. What other rumours do we have here? Ah, Socrates. I know, I don't mean to stay on Arsenal, but Arsenal are just really busy at the moment in the window. Um, apparently a deal done with Napoli. Four and a half million pounds. Quite a cheap deal, but uh, to be fair, just get his wages off the books. He's not going to start. He's not going to play next year. We've brought in two new centre-backs. It's time for Socrates to move on. Uh, Decore linked with Everton and they have been very busy. He is now apparently on his way to Monaco. It's come out of nowhere. I don't know how reliable these reports are. It seems like Everton were always the most likely to sign him. I'm guessing he will be moving. 
It's just whether it's going to be Everton or Monaco now. Um, but talking of Everton, my God, they have got two massive deals almost across the line. They will be announced at the same time, I guess. We've got James Rodriguez, Real Madrid midfielder, scorer of one of the best World Cup goals of all time on his way to Everton. And also Alan from Napoli, the Brazilian midfielder, also looks set to join Everton in the next few days. Unbelievable. Uh, we've got Matt Ritchie linked with Bournemouth. I guess they would be willing to let Matt Ritchie go back to Bournemouth if they get Ryan Fraser. So he'd be going back to where he used to play. Um, and another deal involving Newcastle and Bournemouth, Callum Wilson, who was linked with the move to Fulham, is now mostly linked with Newcastle. So we could be seeing Callum Wilson playing for Newcastle. What does that mean for Jolington? Is his time up? He didn't have a very good first year, did he? Um, another one for Arsenal. Again, I'm sorry, it's been a few days since I did one of these. Uh, Danny Ceballos. Apparently, a loan deal has been agreed. It will be another year this time. For free. Apparently, Real Madrid have waived the loan fee, which is amazing. And that's mainly, I guess, because we have not got an option or an obligation to buy. Ceballos will be with us for the season and then he will be going back to Real Madrid. But that doesn't mean that we won't try and sign him then. Who knows? But a free loan deal in this day and age is amazing. Ceballos, he's worth around 30 million probably more than that, to get him on loan for, for a whole season for free is amazing. Apparently he had offers from multiple Spanish clubs, a couple of Italian clubs. He said no to all of them. He wanted Arsenal. He wanted Arteta, my manager. So that looks to be a done deal and announced shortly. So that would mean two more signings for Arsenal. I would argue that Partey and Alwa would still be insane additions. I think we're going to be playing three central midfielders next season in a 4-3-3. So we'll keep an eye out for that one. Uh, what else do we have going on here? Upamecano linked with Manchester United quite heavily. I really, really hope that doesn't happen. And Golo Kante linked with Inter Milan. You can see why I'm doing a quick fire um, rumours list here because there is just so much going on right now. I think that pretty much covers it. The only other one that maybe I haven't mentioned is Ivan Tone going to Brentford, which I guess would mean Brentford are going to be losing one of their strikers. Is it Watkins? I might have that one wrong, but uh, I think I've covered most of the deals and rumours, some of the bigger ones at least. I love making these videos. Hopefully you guys enjoy watching them. This means you don't have to go online and, and research it yourself. You can just click on my video when they come up and I try and cover most things. But yeah, that's a lot of rumours right now. That's what happens when you delay a video for two, three days. Um, again, just a massive thank you to everyone who's reached out. Um, I might as well talk about it a little bit. So my granddad passed away. He's been suffering with heart problems for the last 10 years. He had a quadruple bypass 10 years ago. So that's why he's been suffering. He's had multiple heart attacks and a device that's inside shocking him all the time. Uh, unfortunately, he just lost his battle. He could not continue. He's an absolute warrior. Um, I may not have been the closest to him, um, especially around lockdown. Since then, we haven't been able to to go and see. I mean, a lot of people should be avoiding seeing their elderly family members because, of course, of the uh, coronavirus. But um, obviously, rest in peace, Grandad Man. You were an absolute warrior, a loyal family member, and um, you'll definitely be missed. It's uh, it's really sad, and I hope that all of you guys that have family members that maybe are struggling right now, just make sure you call them, make sure you spend time with them as soon as it's safe to do so, and, and just try and enjoy it and, and don't take it for granted. Family is everything. In, in life without family and friends, what is there, you know? So hug your, your loved ones closely um, because you never know when they're going to be gone. Sorry to end it on such a low. It's really quite sad, isn't it? But uh, all the best, guys. Thank you so much for watching and we will be back with another one soon.